Regina and Alexis Joy from Alexis Joy VIP Access. I am so incredibly thrilled to be chatting with you today and want to wish you the biggest congratulations on your absolutely awe-inspiring film, Awake. Thank you so much. What a loving presentation. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. The movie is wow. You did an extraordinary job as always. It's so gripping. And I just have to tell you, I had to sleep with the lights on last night after watching the movie. It's so great. Thank now, you. I appreciate that. You're so welcome. Now, I want to jump right in. Now, throughout the movie, we see your character have many impactful moments where she teaches her daughter how to survive on her own and gives advice to her on how to live life independently. Now, can you tell us what is the best advice you've received from your mom? Oh, so much. Let's see. The best advice I've received from my mom, I'll say a few. My mom is a reflection of a, the most selfless woman I've ever met. And in her selflessness, she has also taught me that I must care for my heart or else it'll be very hard to care for others. And all she did was care for others. And she was essentially trying to share something that she was consistently working on. And to see someone so lovingly vulnerable, to see someone that was and is constantly working on herself and wanted so bad for her, her daughters to transcend or expedite their process of that which she was, you know, um, that self-love, the journey of self-love and self-acceptance and, you know, to speak to your ego and try to get rid of your ego and live in the now. She was always a reflection of trying. And outside of just like giving great advice of working on yourself and loving yourself and loving others and helping others succeed so you too shall succeed, she was a living example of it. And that's, I think, so, it was so much more profound than the words that came out of her mouth because it's so hard to do something that you cannot see. And she just always made sure to show us a reflection of someone that was just consistently trying to grow and trying to evolve and, and trying to better herself. And so if I didn't have that reflection, I think it would be a lot harder in the difficult times and the uncomfortable times to look at yourself and work on yourself. And she does it so, elegantly. That is so beautiful. I mean, you have such a magnificent mother and she raised an incredible and admirable person like you. <laughs> now, the movie is filled with tons of edge of your seat, hair raising moments. Is there a specific moment that really stuck out to you the most and spooked you out the most? Hmm, what spooked me out the most? I would say when we come across the, the group of humans that are like draining blood and for survival and for being able to you know utilize the blood to regenerate oneself as our bodies deteriorate during sleep deprivation yeah that that one spooks me out the most like what we're capable of as humans both positively and negatively I think the negative they spooked me out the most. Yes, well, I'm so excited for everyone to see this film. Again, I was literally at the edge of my seat. I was wondering what was happening next and you did such a stupendous job as always bringing this movie to life. Now, one of the many things that I also love about the movie is the theme of having a second chance and starting over. And we see that throughout a lot of the characters in the movie. So what was it like for you bringing that powerful message out in this film through a character as strong-willed as Jill? It was liberating, to be honest. It was liberating because it allowed me to reflect in the ways in which I failed when I fail to do that for others, when I've failed to empathize that there is so much happening in other human, like in the person standing across from you that you do not know. And you do not know their struggles and you do not know their challenges and you do not know their obstacles. 
You do not know where they've been, where they've been, and until you ask them, until you sit and hear a story. And so to see so many times in which we really talk about how, you know, the judgment of someone and how they can surprise you because that judgment is totally fabricated off of the biases that we've been domesticated with. I am a, a guilty of this as well. It is so wonderful to look at that and start reflecting in ways you could do better. Like, how am I judging without information? You know, how am I placing these judgments on people that I have never met just by little moments, little moments of either success or failure, you know, good or bad. And how we do that a lot. I, I will only speak for myself and how I can be better at that. But do I see a reflection in our society? 100%, you know? I see how we can all try a little harder to just know that there's a lot more than what meets the eye, a lot more. So amazing. Yes, aside from all of the thrilling moments, I love that it has such an amazing and inspiring message throughout the film. So it's so great. Now, Gina, we're gonna do a very quick speed round. Are you ready for it? Yes, go for it, yes. So the first one is, after the mysterious catastrophe that happens, all of the electricity is wiped out throughout the town, of course, including our cell phones. So what is an app that you can't live without? Google Maps. <laughs> that would come in handy in the film too. <laughs> 100%. I feel like that's maybe the one that I can't live. I just need Google Maps to get me somewhere once and then I kind of remember, but I'm going to need that initial help getting somewhere. Love it. Now, also, in addition to the electricity, it also wiped out the ability for humans to sleep because everyone was staying awake. Now, can you tell us, are you a night owl or an early bird? I'm an early bird and I am a champion sleeper. I am like, if I need to sleep right now, just give me out, out, in, out in 30 seconds. Like, it's something I kind of learned on the set of Jane because, you know, it was such a it was such a heavy duty show and I was working 16 hours a day that if I had 10 minutes, I'd take a nap like this. So I am very opposite of my character, Jill, and what she goes through. I love it. That is hilarious. Now, I know that you can sleep pretty fast, but what is something that you do as part of your nightly routine to maybe help you wind down before you go to sleep? <laughs> You know, this is something I'm working on not doing anymore. I love to eat before I fall asleep. It's like terrible and every like health book says it's terrible, but like, mm, I love to have a full stomach and fall asleep. Like, I guess it's like from being a baby and you just like get all that milk and then you just like fall. I, I, that's, that's something I love to do a lot. That is the best like pre go to sleep plan that I've ever heard. I love it. <laughs> and it's like, my husband will be like, "How I'll eat dessert and fall asleep. Like, I just love it. I love it. At least you'll have some sweet dreams. I mean, who doesn't want to dream about food and snacks? I love that. Sweet dreams. Yep, yep. Now, lastly, for the speed round, if you could take one must-have item with you to help you survive all the panic that was happening in the mass hysteria as seen in Awake, what mm -hmm. would be your one go-to item? Oh, man. It's between, like, sneakers and so I can run and um, rice. Because oh. rice can last you a long time. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Very awesome. But I guess you would lose your appetite. So maybe rice wouldn't do me any good after a while. I really clearly have to put more thought into this. <laughs> Sorry. Love it. Well, you did such an amazing job on that speed round, Gina. I'm going to give you a virtual high five on that one. <laughs> Now, also, this marvelous movie, I'm sure you've created so many unforgettable memories working on this film. So is there a moment that sticks out to you the most that you can tell us about? Oh, like the entire experience was phenomenal. And not that I seldom have that because I usually have such a great, great time. But this one was so fun. It was so fun. And like the family, like myself and Shamir and Ariana and Lucius were so tight. And we like spent so much time together. And Shamir is a Toronto native. So he like took us out and like took care of us. And it was just such a good experience. And like, that is like all you hope for 
you know? Um, but there was like, I mean, from like the kids, you know, uh, playing guitar and singing on set, like literally Lucius and Ariana coming up with songs on set to like dancing with Shamir in between takes to, you know, doing crochet with little Ariana in the trailer as they do, were doing set, like different setups and the relationship I got to create with Ariana's mom, Soli, and it was just so good. Jennifer Jason Lee coming back after we did Annihilation and, you know, her jumping in and doing this with us. It was really good. It was just a really, really good one. It was a good one. And like the love was strong and the experience was loving and positive and it was cha physically challenging, but it didn't matter because we were just so happy, you know? We were just in so much joy, just really loving our experience. That is so wonderful. And I love how you truly create such a great family with every project that you're a part of. And that says so much about how amazing you are as a person, oh. both on and off screen. Now, lastly, Gina, after seeing Awake, everyone, all fans from all over the world will want to see a sequel. So of course, we're crossing our fingers for that. If you could see anything in a sequel to Awake happen, what would you like it to be? You and someone else also said that. I, I guess I never thought about a sequel, but I am all about your premonition. I'm like, yes. Uh, you know, it, you know, to me, I feel like at the end, it really solidifies this idea of rebirth and shedding old habits and things that do not serve us and really clarifying the way we can move forward together as a society, as a human race. And, you know, um, and I think that's something that's like, those are themes that we've been discussing a lot in the past year and a half. And, you know, I, I think that the idea at the end where it really sets you off in, in the space of rebirth and the youth helping us rebuild and giving us a new perspective and new ways to live in our world is very much the way I feel about our youth now and how incredibly strong and vocal and um, powerful they have been. And I've seen that profoundly in the past five, six, seven years, just seeing how our youth really is going to create a better life for all of us. And so it'd be really cool to see like what that, what that would be. And like what it would be if that though those were the ones that were really helping us restructure our um, our dynamic here, you know. That is so excellent. Again, there's so many motivating and really thought provoking messages embedded throughout the film. But thank you so so very much, Gina, for chatting with me today. What an honor it is to be speaking with you and. Congratulations on again on such a gripping and captivating film. Everyone is so thrilled to see you in Netflix's Awake releasing on June 9th. Congratulations again, Gina. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alexis. All your love, all your support means the world to me. Thank you so much.